Okay, first of all, we would like to apologize for the delay. We were experiencing some technical difficulties. Thanks everyone for being here with us. Um, today, uh, which is the World AIDS Day, uh, we want to have this uh, talk and we have here with us uh, the Dr. Jose Molto, who is an investigator and a member of the HIV unit at the hospital German Trias y Pujol. And he will give us a, a talk today on the HIV strategies for prevention. Um, here at Gacy Just Link, we are um, very happy to, to say that it's a few months that uh, we are having finally here for free HIV test for everyone and anonymous on a confidential way as well. So we are very glad to finally have this service here for everyone in Sitges. And today is a very special day, so we wanted to uh, be able to have this talk with the doctor and I'm not gonna explain you anything else because we lost some time trying to connect and I'm gonna pass the, the voice to the, to the doctor here, uh, Dr. Jose Molto. Thanks for being with us. Okay. So first of all, thank you for your invitation and thank you all for staying connected. Uh, in the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you some thoughts about uh, prevention strategies for HIV uh, infection. Okay, so here's where we are uh, with the HIV pandemic. So uh, it's estimated that uh, in the coming years, in the coming 20 years, about 50 million of people will get HIV infections around the world. So it's, uh, it's obvious that uh, we need a, a, a strategies for prevention of HIV transmission uh, worldwide. Okay, okay uh, there, have, there has been uh, many different uh, prevention strategies including uh, sexual education, condom use, uh, STI control, etc. Uh, these are uh, com these are traditional strategies. We all know that uh, they have limited efficacy in preventing HIV transmission. And uh, in this talk, I'm going to focus on uh, some uh, medical intervention, and uh, specifically, I'm going to talk about treatment as prevention, post and pre-exposure prophylaxis. And finally, I will end up uh, showing you some uh, data on preventive HIV vaccines in development. So the first idea I would like to, to transmit is that uh, if we want to control the pandemic, it is vital that we all get tested for HIV. Uh, currently, around 20% uh, of people living with HIV uh, are not uh, conscious that they are HIV infected, so they are not taking care of their own health and they are transmitting the infection to other people. So in addition, uh, near half of my new patients, and this is common to other colleagues, uh, I, in the first visit uh, they are what we call late presenters. So. Uh, we lost a, a golden opportunity to take, to take care uh, of these uh, people and also to, to prevent HIV transmission uh, uh, within the, the community. So the first idea is please get tested for HIV, do it, and if you are positive, start treatment as soon as possible. And this is the first uh, treatment, uh, the first um, strategy to prevent transmission that I'm going to talk about. This is treatment as prevention. This is a concept that we are managing for the last decade and is based uh, in that uh, we know that when a person living with HIV has undetectable viral law and this happens within the first weeks uh, that we are using antiretroviral treatment, this person doesn't transmit the virus to their sexual partners. So is what is called U equals U from undetectable equals untransmittable. And this really works. We know from, a, we, we know from a different parts of the world that a, this, ha, this strategy treatment, early treatment as prevention has resulted in decreasing uh, rates in HIV transmission uh, in the community. This graph 
show uh, data from the British Columbia in Canada and you, you can see here in the, in the x-axis uh, the years and these lines represent the implementation of different strategies of uh, massive testing and early uh, treatment and retroviral treatment. In the blue line you can see the number of people under uh, retro antiretroviral treatment and this increase was reflected by a decrease of new HIV infections in the community here in the, in the red line. So treatment, early treatment uh, and control of viral load is uh, critical uh, for controlling HIV widespread uh, in the community and I uh, recommend you early uh, testing and treatment. Okay. Other uh, strat... Sorry? es esta pantalla. Es que es alucinante. En el Zoom creo que hay una cosa que es que silencias a todos. silenciar a todos. Sorry for the half an hour delay. <laughs> we are having experiencing some difficulties um, and it's getting a bit complicated. So I apologize to everyone. Thanks for staying there. Uh, thanks for being with us. Today on the 1st of December, uh, it's World Day. We want to talk about the HIV strategies, prevention strategies. So we're gonna have this talk with uh, Dr. Jose Molto who is um, investigator and doctor from uh, the German Stries and Pujol Hospital. And I'm not going to talk longer about how many services do we do here, because you may know them or you can ask at the end, but I'm going to pass um, now the voice to, them, to the doctor so we can start now the talk about the HIV prevention. At the end of this chat, we'll be able to have some questions in case you have any. You can write them or send us a text if you want. Okay. First of all, thank you for your invitation and thank you all for, for staying connected. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you some thoughts and some uh, evidence about uh, about uh, strategies to prevent HIV transmission. So uh, where are we now about the, the pandemic? Okay, so the, where are we now with the HIV pandemic? So currently the transmission of HIV infection is uh, staying very stable and we know that we, we, in these uh, decades uh, from 2015 and 2035 uh, about 50 million people are going to get infected by HIV. So we really need strategies to prevent HIV transmission worldwide. So 
there are different strategies to prevent HIV transmission. We all know about condoms, uh, control of STIs, uh, and other kind of, of strategies. We all know that they have limited efficacy and we know where we are. And when I'm going to focus on is on medical interventions, especially I'm going to tell about treatment, antiretroviral treatment as a prevention strategy, uh, post and pre-exposure prophylaxis, and I will end up talking something about new preventive HIV vaccines on development. Okay, the first idea uh, which is uh, crucial is that for implementing uh, strategies to prevent HIV transmission, we have to get tested for HIV. Around 20% of people living with HIV are not aware that they are HIV infected, so they are not taking care of their own health and they are transmitting the infection in the community. Even more, uh, near half of new HIV infections coming to the hospital are what we call late presenters. Uh, these patients are patients with a low CD4 count, infected for a long time, and we are losing a golden opportunity to take care of their uh, health status and also for preventing HIV transmission. So the first idea, so the first idea is that uh, we have to get uh, tested for HIV and if you are positive, uh, you should be uh, started on antiretroviral treatment as soon as possible. Why? This is because we know that when a, a patient starts antiretroviral therapy, his viral load is going to go down very rapidly and uh, within a few weeks, uh, he is going to become what we call undetectable. This means that in the, in the blood and in the fluids, uh, there is so few viral particles that he is not going to be able to transmit the HIV infection to, their, to his sexual partners, uh, even when they don't use condom. is what we call U equals to U, or undetectable equals untransmittable. So this is the first treatment, uh, the first prevention strategy uh, that I would like to, to point out. Uh, the efficacy of this strategy has been shown in different uh, geographical areas, such as in San Francisco, but also here in, in Barcelona. And this graph is from uh, British Columbia in Canada. Here you can see the natural years, and you can see, and these lines represent uh, the implementation of different strategies uh, with massive HIV testing and uh, early antiretroviral treatment initiation. And you can see that it resulted in an increase of people uh, receiving antiretroviral treatment here in the blue line, and this increase resulted in a decrease of new HIV infections in the community in these years here represented by the red line. So first strategy, get HIV test and start uh, antiretroviral treatment soon and use treatment as a prevention uh, a strategy for the community. The other uh, prevention strategy I'm going to talk about is post-exposure prophylaxis. What this means? This means that if I have been exposed to HIV because I haven't used a condom and the condom uh, broke during the sexual relationship and I have been exposed to HIV, I can do something to uh, try to block uh, the possibility of HIV infection in my body. This something means uh, having antiretroviral treatment, having a combination of three antiretroviral drugs during four weeks. And this is vital that for efficacy of post-exposure prophylaxis, we need this to be started within 72 hours after the exposure. If we uh, wait more than 72 hours, we can do nothing to avoid that. Uh, so PEP need to be started as soon as possible. And here, uh, some hours may change your life. So this is very important. If you think that you need post-exposure prophylaxis, this is a medical emergency and you should go to an emergency room and ask for post-exposure prophylaxis. Okay. The other uh, strategy is pre-exposure prophylaxis. I haven't been exposed to the virus yet, 
but I know that I'm going to be exposed because I'm going to uh, meet some friends and we are going to have sex and we are not going to use condom or whatever. So what we can do with this? Uh, we can take a, a daily pill uh, to prevent HIV transmission uh, and we really know that this strategy is very effective and it's able to decrease HIV transmission by 90%. So this table summarizes different clinical trials, but we have also data uh, from real life uh, showing that PrEP works uh, and yeah, that PrEP is able to really decrease uh, HIV transmission rates, not only between uh, MSMs, but also uh, in heterosexual couples. And here in the, in the last column, if you see, uh, you can see that the efficacy uh, really increases when there are detectable drug levels. What does it, this mean? That it really works when the people take the PrEP. If you don't take it, then the efficacy really goes down and you lose this benefit. So, so PrEP works if it's taken. Probably we don't need to, to take 100% of the doses, but we need to take a, a substantial proportion of the, of the prescribed doses if we want to get all the benefits from, from PrEP. There is normally PrEP, uh, the, the way it's uh, licensed now, uh, it consists of taking one pill uh, daily, but there is another way of, of taking PrEP, is what we call uh, on-demand or event-driven uh, PrEP. This consists of taking two pills before uh, having sex, uh, within 24 hours uh, before having sex, another pill 24 hours later and another pill 48 hours later. This modality of PrEP uh, has shown uh, also efficacy, about 90% of uh, efficacy in reducing uh, HIV transmission. This graph is comparing this modality of PrEP with placebo. Here you can see that the rate of transmission in people taking uh, even driven, uh, driven PrEP compared to placebo was much lower. Uh, but what we have to see is wh whether uh, the best uh, PrEP uh, modality for you is uh, on demand because it's going to be very sporadic or if you uh, may benefit more from daily PrEP. One uh, drawback or one criticism to PrEP is that PrEP use may be linked to less condom use and this could uh, facilitate transmission of other uh, sexual transmitted diseases and these are uh, data from, from Catalonia and you can see that during the last decades we have seen a, a increase in the rates of new STDs uh, in the community including syphilis, gonococcal or chlamydian infections but PrEP also can give us an opportunity if we, uh, if we are uh, prescribing PrEP to people at risk of having sexual transmitted diseases and we test these people for STDs, we can do a early diagnosis and we can treat asymptomatic people and then we can cut the, transmis the transmission chain. So PrEP may result in the end of, in a reduction of transmission of STDs also. And let me finish with some words about a preventive HIV vaccine. So this has been a goal for us uh, for the last decades. Some attempts have been made to find out a, a, a preventive HIV vaccine that works and it hasn't been possible. And why it has been so difficult to, to find a, a, a an, ethical, an efficacious vaccine for HIV? This is because uh, HIV variability. This graph shows uh, different uh, genome, HIV genomes throughout the world and in comparison with us, uh, so you can, you can see that uh, all genetic variability in, in, our, in our species is about 0.1%. So this variability uh, explains why some of us are white, some are black, some are Asian, African, tall, short, thin, fat, whatever. This is also all explained by this uh, narrow variability. So if we now pay attention to uh, HIV variabi genetic variability uh, worldwide, 
it goes up uh, to uh, 30 percent so 300 times our genetic variability so this uh, give us a, an idea of how difficult it is to get a vaccine covering all different HIV strains circulating around the world. So the strategy for development of new vaccines is to take in, into account all these genetic variability and to design what they call mosaics. Uh, and this means that imagine the virus uh, composed of different proteins and positions. So here I put an example, position one, two, three, and four. And we can see all the virus uh, in the world, and uh, we can see in position one how they are. So in this case, position one, position one, the more frequent characteristics are blue and red squares. So our mosaic in position one is going to have blue and red squares. So if we go to position two, here we have also a blue and, and red square so in position two we go for that and and so on and so forth so in the end we we came up uh, with a, a mosaic protein uh, composed with different positions and the most frequent characteristics of the virus at each position so the virus may may vary one position or two or three but it cannot vary all the positions in one time because it could lead to a, a, a non-infectious virus and will disappear, okay? And with this vaccine, uh, more than 20% of viral strains circulating around the world are covered with, with this strategy. So this is the mosaic vaccine. Now there are trials going on. Here uh, we see uh, the preclinical development uh, for this vaccine. In these studies in the in the lab and with animal models basically in non-human primates uh, they were able to identify uh, an effect uh, and potential markers of efficacy when these studies uh, gave positive results they went into clinical uh, development in phase one and two trials in in persons in these trials, they confirm the safety, so the vaccine uh, doesn't produce severe or unexpected, unexpected adverse events, and safety is similar the, to that of the flu vaccine that, that we get every year. And they also were able to identify immune responses directed uh, against uh, HIV, what we call uh, HIV immune responses. Uh, and so now with uh, this is the point we are now uh, phase one and two trials have been uh, completed and we are going into phase three studies these phase three studies the purpose of these trials is to evaluate whether this vaccine is efficacious to avoid new HIV infections in the community and there are two big uh, phase three trials uh, now uh, running uh, in the world. One is the Invocodo trial. This is a trial uh, that is being performed in South Africa in women uh, with more than 2,500 uh, women. Recruitment has been completed and these women now are being follow up. Uh, there's are uh, long studies for two years of follow up and they want to compare the rates of HIV infection in those women who receive the vaccine or those who receive the placebo. The other trial is the Mosaico study. Uh, this trial is being performed in some countries uh, around, across Europe and also in the States and in, in Latin America. And this trial uh, is directed to uh, NSM and trans people uh, is very uh, ambitious uh, because uh, we want to include uh, near 4,000 participants in this trial. So recruitment is open now. Uh, we are recruiting this trial and we are, we are uh, able to, to recruit uh, participants for this trial in our center in collaboration also with BCN Checkpoint. These are uh, the, tri the countries participating in the trial, in Europe, in the States, in Latin America. And this is uh, the design of the clinical trial. 
is a two-arm trials uh, and placebo control. So this means that uh, the participants are going to be split in, in two groups. One group is going to receive uh, the vaccine and the other group is going to receive placebo. There's, uh, there are going to be four doses within the first year of the trial and then a second year, a second, second and a half year of follow-up. So in the end, we will be able to compare the rates of HIV infection in those participants receiving the vaccine or the, or the placebo and we can compare and, and conclude whether the vaccine has been able to avoid some infections or not. So uh, main inclusion criteria for this trial is uh, men and trans uh, people having sex with other men and trans people older uh, than 80 years, uh, of course, being HIV negative. This is a preventive vaccine, so we want to avoid new infections. So participants have to be HIV negative at enrollment uh, and not taking PrEP. This is uh, because we want to show a decrease in HIV acquisition risk. So if your HIV acquisition risk is very low at baseline because you are taking PrEP, because if you remember PrEP is able to decrease transmission by 90%, then we are not going to be able to see any effect. And availability to come to the study visits. I, I'm telling you that these are long studies, more than two years of follow-up. So uh, you will need to come to the, to the clinic uh, more or less uh, four times per year during this period. So if you want more information or you are interested in participating in this trial, you can contact us at these uh, websites or you can send us a, an email to this direction. So to, to sum up, uh, well, we have different options to prevent HIV transmission. Uh, first, uh, we have a treatment as prevention and I really encourage you to get tested for HIV and to be put on treatment as soon as possible in case that uh, you were infected. We have a prophylaxis, post and pre-exposure prophylaxis. Please remember uh, the narrow window for post-exposure prophylaxis and, and, and go rapidly to, to a healthcare center. Pre-exposure prophylaxis with the two uh, modalities, daily or on demand, as your doctor or your counselor about which fits best with you and preventive vaccines hopefully on development and hopefully uh, being uh, accessible within the, the next year uh, if these uh, studies give positive results. So this is the portfolio that we have available now uh, nowadays for HIV prevention and you have to think uh, which the best option uh, for you. So thank you for your attention. Thanks, doctor, for your. You sit here closer. Um, probably you can come closer here. Um, now it's time for questions. In case you have any questions for the doctor, or regarding the studio mosaico, or regarding any of the strategies that the doctor explained to us here, um, so the doctor will be happy to answer you any question. You can use the chat. Um, we may use some of the questions that uh, were asked for some of the viewers during the Spanish uh, chat and some of them were regarding the um, exposition to HIV on oral sex. Yeah, uh, that, well... If that's a risk um, the practice or not. Uh -huh. Well, or, uh, oral sex... All sex is, is, a, is a risk practice, so, uh, but what is clear that we have high risk practices and is a anal intercourse without a condom is the high risk, the highest risk practice, especially for the bottom. Uh, but uh, oral risk is, uh, oral sex is a risk practice, probably is a low risk practice, but it's not zero risk. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you may have a, a, an ulcer or you may have some, some dental problems and it could be a doors for HIV to, to go in and infect. So I would say it's a low risk practice, 
but not uh, is uh, is off completely off. Mm -hmm. Um, some other questions were also regarding the, the prep. How, how can I take prep? How can someone take prep? So, well, tested? fortunately, having prep in our, in our city is very easy. Uh, there are some centers that they, they are allowed for providing prep uh, to those people interested in. Uh, you may contact Gacy Cheslin, they will direct you to some services. Uh, or you can go directly to these services, for example, in, in the main hospitals in the, in the city of Barcelona. We all uh, can do that. BCN Checkpoint uh, also can do that. And so there are, there are different places. But if you have any questions, you can, you can contact KCH's link and they will direct you to the best place for you. Mm -hmm. um, regarding as well the Mosaic study, um, is there any top age, any up to age, maximal age to take part on the research? Yes, for vaccine trials, normally the, the oldest age to, to be a, a participant in these trials uh, is usually set up at 60. So we are looking for people aging between 18 and 60 years of age. Mm -hmm. Someone is asking, in case I'm not taking PrEP daily, how, I how can I have, or how should I take it? In case I'm not taking prep daily, how daily. I have to take it? meaning meaning the the non regular prep. So we have two modalities for prep. One is take one pill every day, and the other is the the on demand modality. This means that if you don't you don't need to have daily prep because your exposure, your potential exposure to HIV is not going to be so frequent. Uh, then you can take two pills before sex, one pill 24 hours after, and one pill 24 hours later on. And with these four pills, uh, you are covered by 90%. Okay, not 100%, but 90%. Uh, so the question here is, how frequent, how frequently are you going to be on this prep on demand? So if it's going to be one or two times per month, is okay but if it's going to be uh, more frequent one time per week and even weeks with two times then you are a best candidate for daily prep that for on-demand prep but this you, you should discuss this with your prep uh, providers what what's happening if you miss one of the daily takes for if you we we as i said we don't need 100 percent adherence to to the pill so if you miss one dose or two doses is not going to happen anything uh, wrong. The problem here is that uh, if you if you are a mess and you because you are you are healthy and you forget to take these pills uh, and then uh, if you get infected taking prep, they may this may have negative consequences for your future health status. So it's very it's very important that if you are taking prep, you should take. Uh, the, the pills and you should uh, go to the medical controls not only for HIV infection but also for other uh, sexually transmitted infections to get tested every every three months and, and to, to manage the, the situation properly. It has the same efficiency the on-demand prep as the regular prep? Uh, as far as I know there are not head-to-head -head comparisons in the same study but we have similar studies showing similar rates of efficacy. So I would say that uh, they, they are very, very similar in terms of efficacy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, sorry, I'm reading it. Do you think COVID is going to have any effect uh, on the number of people that got HIV this 2020? Well, this is an interesting question. Maybe uh, we are going to see a decrease in uh, new HIV infections. We all uh, have a socialite less. We all have uh, less uh, people to interact with and to have sex with. Uh, so uh, this could have resulted in, in lower rates of HIV transmission. But it's just a, an hypothesis. Mm -hmm. we, we will see the numbers. And, and how is COVID affecting those who were already diagnosed with HIV previously? 
Well, it has been a, a very. This has been has been stressful for for everyone, for doctors, for patients. Uh, patients were scared about uh, going to the hospital for medications, but they were scared of stopping taking their medications. Uh, vis uh, medical visits were cancelled, uh, so no visits, no control, no controls, no possibility to reach your doctor because he was doing COVID. Uh, so it has been stressful for for everyone, especially for those patients, what we call historic patients, those patients who, who lived the, the hard uh, days of, of HIV infection and they were near to, to die of AIDS and they, th this situation in some way resembled that, uh, that experience. So this has been particularly stressful for them. Mm. Which, which tip would you give? to those people who are living this from a stressful point of view, meaning those people who are living, who are maybe HIV diagnosed, maybe they were diagnosed a long time ago and they are now re reviving all this, reliving again all this um, epidemic situation. What tip from a medical point of view would you give to them? Well, the first thing I would say is talk about that. So just talking about uh, and taking out all these fears and stress Sometimes the, the only the, this thing is therapeutic itself, uh, but if if not, if they feel they need, there are resources they they are uh, and they they can look for professional help. Um, we, we in our unit we are lucky we have a psychologist, we have a therapy doctors, and and well, we can refer uh, some cases to to this uh, professional. So. You were saying before that during this COVID pandemic situation, um, obviously people could not go to the hospital, they could not have their regular checkups. Is it possible that this has any effect on the health situation of the HIV positive people? Well, I think that if, 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 if that was the case, uh, I, I think that this impact should be uh, not very, not very large, and why is because uh, most of our patients are very well controlled and stable on antiretroviral treatment. Uh, actually, before the pandemic, we were discussing whether we need to see patients two times a year or one is enough. The pandemic came, and most of my, my patients, the last visit was. October, November uh, 2019, and I'm, I'm catching up with them now. So a, a year has passed and nothing really, really happened in most of them. But in some patients, especially those uh, not, uh, with a not sustained viral control or with very low CD4, or those with uh, living the situation, especially in a stressful, a stressful way, uh, well, uh, they, they may perceive themselves uh, as you know, without checkups and this may be a problem for them. Mm -hmm. We were talking before about the vaccine and the study for the vaccine on a preventive way. But what about the therapeutic one? Are there any studies on a phase, advanced phase? Yes, uh, there are another approach is to have a, a vaccine, an HIV vaccine not to prevent it, new infections, but for treatment of uh, patients already infected for HIV. What we are looking for in these cases is to have a strong HIV responses, able to control the virus without the need of taking antiretroviral drugs. Okay? They, uh, there are different strategies, only vaccines, vaccines co in combination with what we call latency reactivating agents uh, to, to, to shake the virus which is uh, hidden within the cells and there are many many different it's, it's a very exciting uh, uh, research area uh, currently these trials are in phase two most of them uh, and and we will we, we are looking forward to go to phase three in the coming years mm -hmm. um for two more questions and then we'll uh, finish it and more um how is the process of how is it going to work for the mosaic study if anyone who is watching us says, okay, I want to take part in this process. 
in this study how is the yes it's, if someone is interested in, in participating in this study or simply to get more information about the, the study uh, he can contact us uh, with uh, the website uh, socrecerca.com or yo soy investigacion.com or uh, he can send us an email to the, the direction in the in the screen as such uh, at flsida.org okay just for the people who is viewing us this video will be later uploaded also on youtube so you will be able to if you miss or you i don't remember or i couldn't see it it will be later on youtube so you can check it out or you can send us an email and then we will we'll reply to you um why do you think people on prep is seeking for hiv negative people when they are on the dating apps on grinder or swap why, why do you think this is happening well i'm not very familiar about uh, these practices uh, as you say uh, people on prep are looking for are HIV seeking negative so they say okay i'm on prep but then they prefer to have sex with hiv negative people well for me it would be a contradiction if i'm going to have sex with an hiv negative person then i don't need prep so i don't see the point of of this practice yeah it could be, uh, not, that is not a question, but maybe it's a general uh, thing, thought that maybe PrEP has been used a lot as, okay, I take PrEP, but in reality, I'm not taking it. But it's, for, it, yeah. it's a kind of also, because now it's so extended, it could be a kind of, okay, I'm not taking the PrEP really, but I prefer yeah. to have unsafe sex. Well, c could be, but when, when you are having sex with someone that you don't know that and you have to to rely on what they are telling is, is complicated. So, mm -hmm. Okay, um, thanks a lot for your time. It was thank you really, for really educational and we had a lot of information. Uh, thank you all who are watching us because really it was a bit difficult to start um in these pandemic times uh, virtual uh, conferences are not so easy as we thought they would be but uh, i appreciate your patience and the doctor time as well thank you very much thank you thank you